I'm gonna call you Sogar, even though we know each other IRL. When I was 10 years old, I, I played Dungeons and Dragons. I came up with the name Molan, but it was too similar to Moron, so <laughs> I changed it to Sogar. Okay. And I've had it ever since, and it's been like my moniker online. Okay. So since you were 10? Since I was 10, yeah. Wow. But anyhow, we didn't meet on YouTube, so <laughs> use the internet yeah. safely. So, Sogar. So you, I remember, are, have been really interested in 3D printing. Like, let's get a 3D printer. What's so exciting about it? I think it's like the first real game changer in manufacturing that you've seen in a while. I mean, they've done a lot with process automation. <laughs> but not really the act of building things. You've seen mm -hmm. it on a small scale with like chips and that sort of thing, but mm -hmm. it's getting to the point now where you could sort of like print arbitrary patterns to a mass scale. Right. And like if this continues, you might get to the point where they're printing houses. I heard a, a story about a really big 3D printer that actually took industrial waste, just scrap material, and is actually used to print large pieces to build a house. And mm -hmm. that was in China. And also it brings manufacturing down to a much smaller bar of entry. Right. I think like only major companies could actually do this type of manufacturing, but now people could have a house printer that manufactures to a similar quality. Right. And like with things like the MakerBot, you could print the wrench if you right. need it and don't have it. It's democratizing. Yeah, in theory, it's pretty fascinating. Exactly. <laughs> I was always really interested in following 3D printing. All the new printers that come out, you can uh, print conductive material, so you can print actually a circuit. Mm. There's one where you can infuse with wood or metal. It's, it's still plastic FDM, but it's got other things that are kind of doping it. I'm really fascinated to see all those things, but I, I hadn't actually thought, you know, I'm gonna go out and buy one. But since I got one as a, a present, I thought that yeah. was really cool. It was very exciting. I was very excited. So here's what he did. This is the Qify Invent software. I traced this Beezer curve in two dimensions, and then it gets rotated in three. And I made a cut at the bottom and made a shell out of the top. And then you can even add this little uh, fillet to make the edges smooth. Hmm. I thought that was really cool. It was a pretty intuitive tool. I didn't really consume that much tutorial. Okay. And so I tried printing it out really small. So this is blue PLA. Okay. And this is sped up like 20, 20 times or something, hmm. maybe more than that. Okay. And so the, the issue that I had with this particular piece was that it actually had a big like bulge on one end where hmm. the print head stopped and started for each. I see. Level? Okay. Oh, this is exciting. Oh my god. <laughs> you got everything. So here's my little toys. <laughs> here's everyth everything yes! I printed. That's us. So there's that piece. Okay. So I was modeling it after kind of like a bombilla. If you know what that is, it's like a, a gourd that you would drink, drink out tea of out, out of. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can see there's a couple of major problems. The bottom is nice and smooth, and it's flat, and it stands up, and it mm -hmm. would work, except that, you know, it's got this little bulge on one end, and it's got a couple of serious flaws. Because it was starting at the same, like, position each exactly. time. Exactly. Can so you randomize the starting position? Oh, God. So I wasn't able to find any settings for that. Maybe that's the big problem with it, but it, the number of things you can change is really small. Okay. Can and you I, modify the software? Uh, that's, uh, no. I mean, it's all very proprietary. Maybe that's... That's the problem. Maybe that's what makes this not the printer for me. It's a very slick looking printer and they're just trying to make it a super user friendly package but not like a, a maker's printer. Right, not if like that a makes DIY sense. from yeah. the up sort of a device. So no open source and not lots of twiddling things. But it did, like, it did a decent job and it's that, pretty rigid. Yeah, it's a really solid piece and I printed it super small. But the problem is, you know, I have this file and I'm thinking, you know, I could scale it up and that would probably solve it. But if I actually really wanted it at this scale, how could I fix it? And the answer is, I don't think I could. Hmm. I think the only thing I could do to make it better would be to make the wall a lot thicker. Okay. And so that might saying, not even do it. I'm not even sure. So yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to move on. I wanted to find all of the limitations that there were there. Okay. So the next thing was this Sunwave ring by Remus B2 or RAM USB 2. Hmm. And this is the Cubify software where that actually does the slicing for you. So this is a, it's a two spool printer. So you can select two different colors and apply them to different parts that you've added um, okay. to the print bed. Hmm. So here I'm, I'm trying to do it in black. And here's basically all the settings you have. You've got the thickness of the layers, which is 70 microns or 200. Oh. And there's the amount of fill and the pattern of the fill. So then you download that to USB and you stick it in. Uh, you can also do it over Wi-Fi, but it, it actually never worked with my Wi-Fi access point. Oh. So I, I only could use USB. Okay. And here's what happened. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. That's all yeah. bad. That's all kinds of bad stuff. I, uh, yeah. So <laughs> a couple of things went wrong there. <laughs> so there's strings that started forming, for one thing. 
-hmm. and that started to pull things around. The print head then started to touch parts of the model that were already solid. These little pieces that don't have a lot of surface contact with the print bed started to shift. The more error there was, the more it made contact with them. Yeah. And then suddenly it's pushing them off, it, they're popping off, and then it's printing into the air, and it's just not working at all. Yeah, deviation from its expectation causes it's, it to fail. It's sort of a chaos-type system where the more it deviates, the more it continues to deviate from yeah. what it's expecting. Okay. So I, I did another print trying to do that same sort of thing, and here you can see it, it didn't get even as far as that. It started pulling them off almost immediately. <laughs> The issue could be related to the temperature of the plastic as it's coming out. What about the toothing, like the roughness of the surface? Right. Somebody even left a comment on my first video talking about how yeah. it's got fine sandpaper so you can use that to add tooth to the surface. So I took that advice. Um, I, did, uh, I did a firmware update that they sent me on Dropbox. I sanded <laughs> and um, you know I tried to wait an extra long time for the glue to dry. Okay. And then I reprinted again um, and what I did was I used the two color and I used the second color for support material. Okay. But it actually self-destructed even faster. <laughs> so what you're seeing there is it's, it's laying down the support material in blue, Yeah. but it's creating lots and lots of little stringies yeah. in between pieces, which are then getting in the way, and they're pulling things around, Yeah. and the, the detachment happened really early. Ooh. And the support material is like, much denser, or yeah. like almost as dense as a regular. It is. Material. So you end up with as much support material as anything else. Yeah. Um, here, there's this is a little quick bit about another thing I tried to print, um, which is a bracelet. Okay. But it didn't have a solid bottom edge. It was kind of a lumpy sort of design. It was pretty cool. Mm. Um, but this kind of just illustrates the fact that with overhang, uh, that's mm. that's really wide like this. Things just kind of droop down. You can't really do this without support material. This doesn't work. I and mean, it's just sort of another thing you need to think about, which is that if you want to have bridging, it needs to happen all on one level, mm -hmm. yeah, and it can only go so far because the plastic will sort of droop before it dries. Yeah. This is the Serpinski tetrahedron, which you suggested. I thought that was a really cool suggestion. Um, Almost. And so what's happening here is this is a, a model that prints it upside down, essentially. So there's the tip, and it's got three blades of support material. So there it is. Ooh. So the issue here is, and it, it, it printed pretty well. It didn't quite finish. It started at the top layer okay. to again start pushing things around. So I stopped it there. And I figured, um, oh, that's okay because the nice thing about this tetrahedron, since it's a fractal, is that if you only get part of it printed, that part is also a Sapinski tetrahedron, uh -huh. just of a lower level, right? Exactly. So yeah, I thought, fundamental oh, cool. benefit of a Sapinski. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so the issue was getting it out, and I'll. I'll show you the remains of it. I really should have just left it in the support material oh, bro. because, I mean, it's it's hollow, and the support material is so much stronger than the model itself at this size. Oh, I see. What you mean. I mean, it's still kind of cool, it's but cool. it's it's destroyed. <laughs> so. Um, oh, but yeah. you have like little serpents. I do. Okay. So there's little bits there that are kind of pretty cool, and actually I can. I can take a little bit. This is the part that was kind of waggling around, and I was worried that it was going to start like dropping hot plastic all over <laughs> the rest of it. Yeah. So I can I can actually pull this one off, and here's a teeny tiny one. Safe. Yeah. Nice. You could probably tweak some parameters like the strength of the the connectors, the density of the connection points. One of the cool things that I discovered as uh, as I was trying to figure out how to do this particular model was open scad. So this is on Thingiverse in a way that's customizable. So there's parameters for that, and there are, um, OpenSCAD is kind of a, even a language for, for building these models uh, in a, a procedural name, way. Poor name. Um, yeah, it's a kind of, it sounds like a scab, <laughs> like an open wound. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Unfortunately. But yeah, so I thought that was cool, and there's even a version of it that's uh, just pure uh, coffee script. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, so Ooh. I thought that was really neat. Like, you could make some really cool uh, procedural stuff. Part of the backstory to my interest in this 3D printing stemmed from the fact that I had a teacher, George Hart, back at my university who taught me algorithms. And he was sort of specializing in 3D printing at the time. And he was the one that demonstrated to us that you could print these objects that like, couldn't possibly be manufactured any other way with like this new technology that was 3D printing. So he actually wrote some software. He was like one of the first people that I think was writing software like this that lets you procedurally generate these shapes. Pretty amazing, I kind of wonder what stage that software is at 
as compared to like software like this now. Yeah. I wonder how much is similar. The procedurally generated stuff to me is a lot more interesting. It's pretty awesome. So I can keep this? Yes, totally. <laughs> how long did this take to print? So that particular print, a few hours. I think it was maybe three or four. Okay. All right, we'll show you another print. Here I'm doing another tetrahedron that's like three inches on a side, hmm. but I'm using a black support material. Okay. Um, and the problem with this one was um, it said it was going to be 12 hours. And then it got a certain amount of the way through, and it was about six hours in, and it just stopped. This little touchscreen on the Cube 3 just said, complete, and six hours remaining at the same time. Oh, okay. The oh. nice thing about this is that the support material means you don't have to do any bridging, but you can print it right side up. And I figured I would just leave the, uh, leave the material in there. That's legitimate. Yeah, even like this, though, it's, it's, this is legitimate. If you look really closely, though, each of the sides looks a little bit different. Mm. Um, and in some of the blue areas, there's actually black that's getting interspersed at each of the layers. Okay. Even if you had, like, an amazing tool, there's no way you could get it all. Yeah. And I wasn't planning on getting any of it out, mm -hmm. but it still doesn't have the kind of quality I quite wanted out of this print. Because okay. this, is, this is pretty chunky shapes. Like, pretty these chunky. Are, there's quite a bit of overhang between the tetrahedrons, the individual little bits. The pattern, I think, is interesting in the cross-section. Yeah, the cross-section is kind of cool. It's, it's got kind of a diamond shape that it's using, or there's a bunch of triangles in there. Mm -hmm. If you look at the bottom, like the bottom is always the smoothest part. The tetrahedron is based on the Sierpinski triangle, mm -hmm. which you can imagine being built up a couple of different ways. Either you can think of it as a triangle, where you take an inverse triangle out of the middle and end up with three triangles, and then you repeat that process for each of those three triangles and so on and so on and so on forever. Mm -hmm. Or you can think of it as um, you've got a triangle and you add you know, two extra triangles onto it of the same size and then so on and so on and so on um, forever because you keep making more and more triangles. Yeah. So you can think of it as building up or as cutting holes. Yeah. Um, and so there's only a certain level you can do that, obviously, before you get too small to actually render. Yeah. I think it's N4. Or five, it would be a pretty pretty awesome one. So we've got a bunch of little ones here that are just like n equals two. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways you could build up this triangle as well. So I was curious the technique that that was being used by the, the software, even like mm -hmm. automation, like a cellular automata can produce it. In certain sure, instances. sure. I think what's happening here is that they're using some transforms. What it's doing, I think, is taking that triangular shape and then just duplicating and translating it. Okay. And then doing that again and again and again. Yeah. To a certain number of times. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you want, you can you can totally um, look this up on Thingiverse. Yeah, I think like one one interesting thing, back when I was taking that class, is that the way he had printed it, he didn't leave enough space in between the, the connecting points for the triangles. Right. So um, it was more fragile. Yeah, and he did actually print it in a complete way. I think that process mm -hmm. would basically extrude a solid structure. Mm -hmm. of uh, two materials. There was like the printing material and then the base material. But it would print it as a cube. And then the one material would be uh, subject to like a lower melting point. So when he heated it up, one of the materials would basically just melt out the supporting right. material. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And it would give him like a really crisp shape, really crisp edges, mm -hmm. but very flimsy edges. Okay. So uh, similar problem where if you just crushed it a little bit, it would break mm. the edges. So okay. It's pretty solid. It's pretty cool. I think you can. Uh, if you use like ABS and PLA hmm. in the same print, they don't stick together as well as this. Okay. So I think maybe that's the way if you really want to have removable support material to do it on this printer. I didn't. I didn't have any ABS. So. Oh, okay. So here's one more print I did, and this was kind of a daredevil print where I actually said, "Okay, let's just try the bridging." So it <laughs> worked. It wasn't Ooh. perfect. So it created some little stringies in the bottom. It did it. Um, and like the some of the surfaces were a little strange. Like, each of the sides of the tetrahedron looks different. Okay. But it did it. It didn't fall through. Oh. It created a... I think this is the nice. best print. You can see there's some unintentional bridging, so some of the little... Some of the smallest uh, holes are getting covered up. Mm-hmm. But... This will totally break. It, it... But it totally worked. And I think it's actually fairly solid. It's not so bad. Oh. And I was, I was actually impressed with how well it, it nice. coped with the bridging. So it could do it. It can do it. It can do it right side up with no support material. And it's a really small size, and it's, a, it's just like n equals 4 again. Yeah. So some of, some of the detail is maybe missing, um, and it's a little uneven, but it essentially worked. Yeah. You should scale it up. <laughs>
Okay. The issue is when you when you're even if you're scaling it up a whole bunch and you have this much detail, um, it just adds a lot more fragility. Okay. I'm impressed. I love it. Cool. Cool. So there's no more printer. So yeah, I did return the printer. Um, <sighs> luckily, it was purchased through Best Buy, and they do holiday returns sure. all the way up to January fifteenth. Okay. Uh, but if you actually if you bought it. Um, through Cubify, you would not have that option. They do not accept any returns. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like they're just kind of suffering from some bugs that could be fixed. I think so. I didn't really want to have the sort of printer where when there's an issue, instead of like trying to figure out how to tweak it and understanding how it really works, you're calling support. Yeah. I mean, but for other people, that's probably what they want. Like, I figure yeah. um, there's a certain group of people for whom this is actually exactly what they want. Yeah, that's true. That makes sense. And it seems like maybe they should have a library of things that they know work well. I, I think that almost sort of exists for other printers that are more popular just because yeah. so many people print so many things. Yeah. So you know, hey, I, I printed this on my MakerBot and these pr particular proportions and settings, it worked out and here's, it, it was great or here's what was wrong with it. Yeah. Um, and I, the problem is for the Cube 3, that doesn't exist yet. Right. Okay, so it'll get there. I think so. And there are some things like they provide like on their website that seem cool okay. um, that I'm sure will print super awesome on the printer. So yeah. if you like see something that they're actually putting out, mm. I, would, I would guess that you're not going to have to tweak anything and you can really quickly print those things. Mm -hmm. So what if you had a 3D printer that allowed you to modify the print logic? Would that make it more interesting to the point where you would keep it? I mean, it's a huge investment of time, but yeah. yeah. I don't know if I want to necessarily spend all that time. I would have a, a lot of fun doing that, Yeah. Um, but there's, you know, there's other stuff to do too. There's That's other true. hobbies. I agree, I agree. Life goes on. Yeah. There's only so much you could do with a Sierpinski picture. But you could look at it all day. You could just, we'll just stare at it. It's beautiful. I'm, I love this. It's like the best object that I've ever received. Well, um, yeah, you can have all, this, all the stuff that I've printed is yours. <laughs> no, I don't want to. You should keep some of it. I'm going to take the ones I think are... Okay, you can have all the tetrahedrons. <laughs> How about that? You don't like the tetrahedrons? No, I do. Okay. Just, um, you know, keep them in the office where I can see them. Okay, that works. Yeah, we put them okay. in the shared location. All, all right. right. Excellent. Yeah. It's cool. cool. I'm sad about... Okay. It is kind of sad. I, I forgive you. You forgive me? Oh, thank you. For having returned it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay. yeah. And hopefully hopefully everybody who, who contributed to the gift will also forgive me. Yeah. Um, so should YouTubers... Should YouTubers forgive me? Is that forgive what you're saying? Forgive you, A, and B, purchase a, a key. Oh, um, I feel like they should not forgive me, and that they should... Um, I'm very upset. They should unsubscribe, probably. <laughs> um, unless you're really interested in seeing nothing about 3D printing for a long time. Um, in that case, then you should subscribe. Okay. If, if you want a 3D printer where there's a certain class of objects where you can print with no muss, and it just works, then this is the one you want. If you want to really like get your hands dirty, I feel like this is not the one you want. Okay. Definitely. Makes sense, makes sense. All right.